Um, David James wasn't out there today. Could you tell us about his situation and, and the squad update, I guess? Yeah, he's um, got a knock uh, against Leicester, so he won't be available. And uh, still Luke, Paul, Anthony, they're away. Diogo is back. Jesse is back, available. Um, apart from that, I think, uh, yeah, obviously Eric's out. So uh, we're getting some players back and losing some. That's just the way it is. Well, uh, um, you're a former Wonder Kid. Ali Ingebrigt Holland scored three goals in the Champions League uh, yesterday. Uh, can you describe what what you think about his development since you worked together? What's your reaction to what he did yesterday, and can he play on on a, a level like Man United one day? Being his, uh, it's, it was nice watching the game last night. But my focus obviously is on the game tomorrow. So it's great watching him. I think everyone in Norway are uh, excited by his uh, developments. In the Europe League before with uh, Molde, uh, what did you learn about with that experience that you can take into this year's Europa League? I think uh, Europa League is here. I really enjoyed it. We won the group with Molde, uh, obviously, close last year against Zenit, and you meet uh, different types of teams, different types of cultures, and that's of course it's a new uh, experience for us tomorrow playing uh, Astana. And, but it's also for them a new experience and it's, uh, it's important that you win your home games, especially this group as well with two away games being AstroTurf, I think uh, home games will be uh, important for us. Ollie, Romero played in goal the last time United won this competition, have you made a decision on whether he'll play and if so, how good has he been as a number two, because obviously with David he doesn't get much option to get in there. Oh, obviously David signed uh, his contract and uh, uh, now we've got him, maybe I should, uh, should keep on playing him now. It's Sergio's, uh, Sergio will play tomorrow, uh, for sure. Uh, he's, uh, he's proven to be a top, top no, uh, keeper behind uh, David and to keep him ready if something happens to David, of course, tomorrow is a chance for me to uh, give him some much needed game time because David's been very robust and to, to give him the chance is great and he's, he's always been uh, reliable. How do you approach the Europa League in terms of the English clubs talk about the demands it places on their squad? Yeah. And obviously there's been a lot of young players around the squad. Yeah. Are any of them going to start tomorrow? One of them sits here. He's going to start. So it's great for, uh, for us because I have a big squad. I've got, uh, we had pre-season which went really well. Everyone were uh, fighting for places. Then the closer we got to, uh, to the league, we had to make a decision on the starting eleven. Uh, Axel's one of them who uh, unfortunately just didn't uh, make the starting eleven, and, and we played well. So um, now is a chance for some of them to uh, get some minutes, and it's a, we'll have a game every three or four days now. So uh, we'll we'll see the use of the squad more, and there'll be some young ones tomorrow. Yeah, Greenwood, Greenwood will play definitely. He's uh, we want to. It's his first start since Cardiff last year, so uh, he, ne he also needs uh, game time. Uh, there's been a documentary on uh, Amazon Prime just recently released showing how Daniel James was just on the brink of signing for Leeds United in January. How happy are you that he came here instead and how you think of the way he's played? Delighted with Dan. Uh, of course, that we signed him, uh, that we uh, managed to get him uh, to Manchester is fantastic. Uh, He's proven with his X Factor, uh, he's proven already that he'll give the squad a lot. So uh, I don't watch too many documentaries, uh, <laughs> but uh, I know he was very close. But that's football. Sometimes, you know, you got to take a chance and um, sometimes it, it works uh, in different, uh, different ways and strange ways life. And he's, uh, he's started really well here. Oh, like Fred? did pretty well when he came on at the weekend, he had a yeah. good impact, he's obviously had to wait for that chance. Uh, how confident are you that he's going to get off to a good start now? I mean, the assumption is that he is going to start tomorrow. It's You're picking my team, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I might as well just give it here. So, uh, well, obviously, obviously Fred, he came on, did well for the 20 minutes. We needed his legs, his sharpness. And uh, he's been... Uh, 
patient. He's been working hard. Uh, he's not a young boy, but he's uh, he's still young in his uh, English career, and hopefully it will kickstart uh, his uh, his season tomorrow. I'm sure we'll uh, we'll see more and more of uh, Fred. We we spoke about it uh, earlier. He's had some great games in midfield with uh, with Scott, the PSG Arsenal uh, games, for example. So we're just waiting for that to uh, flourish. Oli, now clearly you'd have ambitions for Champions League, not Europa League, but with David signing that contract, what does it say for you and how pleased are you that you've got a player of that class that's committed now to Manchester United and, and how much of a boost does it give <coughs> every player in the squad that world-class players do still want to be at Manchester United? And there wasn't, we, most of the time we'd get to keep the ones we want to keep. And... Uh, the longer it went, uh, but the more I got to... Uh, to listen in and speak to David, I was pretty confident that uh, we were going to make it. And David's delighted. I think you can see by his performance uh, against Leicester that he'd uh, made up his mind. Uh, you can see the focus in his eyes again. And it gives everyone that place in front of him. You can ask Axel uh, a boost, because you do feel very secure with a, with a focus, David, uh, in behind you. And he's really... Uh, worked hard this this season and uh, with Richard coming in as a coach with Emilio I think we've uh, we're going to see more of him because we're on a on a path to to build him up he's still young Edwin signed for us when he was 35 so I'm sure David will be a part of the uh, of a successful United team <laughs> yeah most definitely I think even in the training games when you have David behind you just feel more secure feel a bit more liberated um, to express yourself because you know he's behind you and like, you guys see it every week, he's always stuck in the shots. Ale, Calgary have been cleared of racist chanting towards one of your former players, Romelu Lukaku. Um, is it evidence the authorities aren't taking this problem seriously enough still? Well, if you, uh, you have to catch the uh, call it idiots, uh, racists, and we've just got to keep on uh, uh, working towards uh, that people really understand what football is about, and that's about enjoying yourself on the pitch, and when you, when you uh, accept that, I, th I think it's wrong. Hi, Ole. Uh, you work with Braut Holland, and tomorrow we'll see Mason Greenwood. What's your most important advice to these talented strikers? You know, when you've got strikers who can score goals, you should never lose the hunger of scoring goals, never lose the appetite of uh, creating chances, be ready to take your chances. Mason's one of the best finishers uh, I've seen, and, and uh, I've played with quite a few decent ones. So... Uh, just work hard, work hard every single day. You're 17 or 19 or 18 and 19. There's so many years ahead of you. You've just got to keep on working. And uh, the next game is always the most important one. It doesn't matter if you scored three last week or yeah, two weeks before. The next one's always the most important one. A question for Axel. Um, just wondered how rewarding has it been for you personally this season after your loan at Aston Villa last season to be in the first team picture at United? Yeah, it's all part of... Um you know, the process of growing. Um, I remember starting uh, my glimpses in the first team when I was about 19. Um, you know, it wasn't to be then, but like the manager said, you just got to keep working hard. And now I'm 21 and things are starting to open up more and we have more of a clearer path of where I want to be going and where the team is going. So, you know, staying here this season was the right decision. Just a quick one. You obviously came on in midfield, I think, against Leicester. Mm. So where do you see yourself long term? Uh, definitely a central defender, but again, if the manager needs me to do a, a job for the team to secure the game out, see it out, so we ensure to ensure we win the game, then um, I'm always for it. Hi, Ollie. Um, last season when you were here, the highlight was undoubtedly PSG away. Uh, you experienced Barcelona as well, which are huge occasions for for these players. Tomorrow is going to be completely different to that. In a way, do you want them to maybe feel the hurt of not being in those games to, as a motivation to get back into the Champions League? I think all boys, uh, watch, you watch the Premier League games, you watch the top games, you, you watch when other teams lift the trophies, 
you, uh, if it's not your team, uh, if you watch Champions League last night or tonight, I think they'll they'll want to get there, and we want to get there. And Europa League is a pathway for us there. It's a chance to, if you go on and win this, we're in the Champions League. And uh, but also. You got some youngsters playing tomorrow. It's it's not about thinking too far ahead now. It's thinking about getting into the team, playing well tomorrow against uh, Astana, and then I'll have to think about West Ham. Um, Ollie, at the back here. Yeah. Um, if Mason were to take his chance tomorrow, play well, and maybe next week against Rochdale, is it a case that he become can become a first team regular, or are you just dropping him in and out of these games rather than the Premier League? It's uh, still very young, Mason, but he's maturing. He's developed so much in the last six months since uh, since I came in. I remember the the kid who just wanted to play with his mates in the under 18s, and now he's uh, knocking on the door. He's uh, ready to uh, to play these games. Uh, for me, he's been in the under 21s with England. Uh, he's tasting it more and more, and, and his appetite for football is it must be growing. Uh, for me, uh, let's see how. Uh, I, I just don't want to put too much pressure on him apart from go out there and enjoy yourself because and work hard close down because when the ball lands in your feet I know you're going to score anyway I'm not, I know you're going to make the right finish keeper might make a fantastic save but he's he's as I said one of the best finishers I've seen and uh, it's just that enjoyment express yourself go out on at Old Trafford because uh, there'll be 11 Astana players uh, living the dream uh, tomorrow they it must be the one of the biggest games of their careers. Uh, some of these uh, players, and but I want it to be a memorable one for all our players as well. And that's Mason's one of them. Ollie, can I ask about Charlie Wellens? We saw him out training today. Yeah, a bit of a surprise to many of us. Is he in your thoughts, or is it just a, getting experience? It's what we do uh, at this club. At uh, certain points, we drop him in. Uh, train with the first team, get a little taste for it. Obviously, we uh, I know his dad from when he played, and we know Charlie's. Uh, uh, he's a he's a very good footballer today. I think it was a, a great day for him when training with him, and that's I remember when I was in the first team. Suddenly, Fabian Brand is there, 15 years of age, and training with us, and it's just one of these little uh, drips that to make him players. And Axel. Two years, three months since your last start at Old Trafford for, for Man United. How much is it going to mean? And I mean, I guess that's reward for, for not going out on loan again. I mean, was that close at this in the summer, or is it was your focus always on kicking on here? Um, like I said, we had a conversation with our manager. Um, you know, we decided what was best for my development. Um, staying here was the better option. You know, I have faith in the process. Uh, the plan is in place. Um, Again, tomorrow is a stepping stone to reaching the bigger goal. So, yeah, um, I don't let the distance of when I've played kind of dictate how I feel. Again, every opportunity is, is there for me to express myself, and that's why I want to deliver tomorrow. Axel, everyone knows you've been at the club for, for many years, and it's been quite a journey for you. But do you think you've grown through that journey? And everyone's talking about this perhaps as your breakthrough season. Do you get that feeling that you're getting closer? Uh, most definitely, I think. Definitely this season, I feel uh, extremely hungry. Um, also, I, I believe in the process. I believe in the coaching staff. I believe in the group of players we have. Um, we're much more uh, a family, I'd say. We're tighter. Um, you know, we communicate better. So, you know, again, for all the other youngsters coming through as well, it'd be a, a great season for them to to kind of jump onto it. Excellent. How much do you feel you developed by being at Aston Villa, both in terms of playing, but also becoming more hardened to life as a professional footballer? Obviously, Villa are a big club, a lot of fans. Mm. They've an up and down season last season, and then hugely important games at the end. Um, again, you kind of realise when you step out into the into the men's world, especially Championship division, um, you realise it's not all about that nice play. It's also doing a job and ensuring you get the three points. Um, you know, it becomes more of a, a shift than just enjoying the game. Um, so I think in, in that terms, I've toughened up a lot, um, learned to kind of ride the battles and understand what you're up against and understand what you have to do to ensure you win the game. 
Ollie, you, you say Mason's one of the best finishers you've seen. The first question is, is he better than you were? <laughs> and as a follow-up, I just wonder, you, you're obviously putting a lot of store in the youth side of things, and yeah. you've been widely praised for that. I just wonder what the risks are for you as manager of a big club like this, putting so much store in so many teenagers. He's better than me now, for sure. That's, uh, I don't have the, la <laughs> the accuracy anymore. But uh, I think it's... Part of what Axel is talking about as well, uh, it's a process, and for these that we trust them, uh, it's for them to grow as uh, players, but also human beings, that responsibility being robust enough to, to go out at Old Trafford. It's not just about enjoying yourself, as Axel says, because you've got to get results, and uh, if you don't throw them in, you don't, you don't know what you've got. So for me... Uh, I don't see this as any any other way uh, of doing it because I've always done this wherever I've been. Uh, so I've not been too many places, but that's <laughs> that's it's my uh, belief as a coach that you have to give him a chance, opportunity, especially forward players. They'll win you games. Defenders, they, uh, as Axel says, it's not about enjoying themselves. It's a shift. Find a way to win the game. Keep them out. And I don't expect Axel to be the most creative uh, player on the pitch tomorrow, but he, he's defending. He's a defender, and Mason's uh, a forward. And if, if he misses a chance, so what? The, there's another one uh, as a defender. You might just get the, uh, the headlines for the wrong reasons. Uh, Axel, um, Marcus Rashford obviously made his name in the Europa League. Uh, how much of an inspiration has he been to the young players in, in the squad? Uh, I think you guys can bear witness to that. Um... You know, since his breakthrough, uh, the energy throughout the youngsters, even the youth team change rooms, it's still, it's still there. That remembrance of when Marcus came through, everyone really believed that it was possible for all of us to come through. Um, so yeah, that 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 season was a big season for the likes of myself, all the team. Like we were still 18, 18 years old. So we was thinking, yeah, we're ready to play first team, but. Uh, no, nah, it was amazing what he'd done and, you know, he's, he's still um, continuing to grow. We're still having that positive energy onto the youngsters now. Always wanted them to develop, like, for example, Mason, Angel, Chungi, they all kind of look up to him and see his pathway and kind of replicate that and make it into their own. And uh, for Ollie as well, um, how do you see Marcus Rashford's stature in the dressing room now? Of course, as Axel says, uh, many of the youngsters have been looking up to him and being he's been an example for them. And uh, he's, he's a true professional, uh, he's, he's um, trying to improve every single day and that's what a Man United uh, player should be. If you're 21 or 31, doesn't matter, or 17, you have to try to better yourself and he's, uh, he's working at it. I thought it was a big moment for him when he scored a penalty against Leicester after what's been happening in the early, early season, so um, he can handle the pressure. Hi Ola. Uh, when United won this tournament the last time in 2017, Mourinho chose a fairly experienced team, uh, certainly towards the latter stages of the tournament. You choose to go for a fairly young side tomorrow. Uh, is that going to be your approach throughout the whole tournament, or will you kind of well, maybe twist and change when you... Every team selection will depend on who's fit, who's available, who's played la lately, wh uh, where we're at, what's the game before, what's the game after, who needs games. It's not uh, set in stone that this tournament is just going to be for youngsters. They might play in the league. They might be the, the experienced ones that need the uh, Europa League games in the end. That's just decisions we have to make uh, at the time. It just it changes like this in the life of a footballer and as a coach. Do we have any questions from our friends from Kazakhstan? Okay. No, okay. Sorry. Thank you. All right. Last question. Sorry, Ollie, is finishing natural to Mason? And then that's if it is. Is that the similarity with yourself? And is that what makes players like you and him so unique and different? It seems natural, but it, it never is just natural talent. It's practice. It's uh, repetition. It's being uh, knowing uh, how to hit a ball. Uh, in whichever situation you're in, he does, and that doesn't come from uh, from birth. That comes from pra practicing. It's probably uh, started when it was early, kicking uh, balloons, and then you go on to it just. But his technique is brilliant. So 
but it's repetition, repetition, repetition. <laughs>